Okay, it's October the 18th. I'm out in the desert near Phoenix. And uh, at this time of the year, most of the fun stuff to eat is dead. But some of these trees still have edible food clinging to them. Um, here's an example. Uh, on this Palo Verde tree, it depends on the species of tree. Some of these are just so hard, they're almost like a rock. This particular kind is, um, you can see there's a there's a little hole in there for from a bug that's eaten into there. Generally speaking, it doesn't matter that much. They usually don't eat the whole thing. And uh, there you go. See, there's something maybe in there. So what? It's very crunchy. The bug isn't poisonous. No big deal. So, I can see that up here there's some ironwood beans, you may be able to see them. There's some still clinging to the pod there, so this would be a really good harvest tree here for dried ironwood beans. This is an even better tree. Filled with uh, bean pods, and a lot of times, you know, sometimes the bean pods are empty. They've, you know, beans have fallen to the ground. Other times, there's a lot of good food in there, and so you got to just get up there somehow, or bend the branch down, and and go through them all, pull them all off the tree, and get what you can, and you got a meal. Okay, so. There's the pod. I'm gonna put on the macro settings so you can see it. Okay. Hopefully you can see this alright. Being inside the pod. So this is uh, this time of the year when it cools off is the most comfortable time of the year for living out here, but just the scarcest for plant foods and tree foods. just in a very short time of harvesting there it's it's that easy there's a bean like I said there's sometimes in, in, in some cases there may be a bug in there or whatever doesn't really matter there's one see let it fly away they'll actually come out all by themselves because they don't want to be eaten there's another one so it, basically the little bug just crawls right out of the bean and goes away. There might be one. Here's one that might be stubborn. No, he, he came out good. Cool. There he is. Little bug. He's got wings. Okay, so there's three beans. Quick. Easy to harvest. No cooking necessary. No preparation between these and the Palo Verde beans. Uh, you're happy. Okay, here's one of the little bugs. Yeah. See, they, they'll drill a little hole in there, and I think probably maybe before they have wings. I'm not sure how, I'm not sure about the lifestyle of these little ironwood wood bean bugs, but yeah, there you go. Whoops. But uh, you just make them fly away, get rid of them, and, uh, and you're good. Good for pottery. You can see the the red clay color. Just add water and fire, <laughs> pretty much, kind of. Well, water, fire, and maybe some uh, 
wild donkey dung. Man, I've been looking for these people's rock art for a long time. And here it is, right under my nose, up on top of this little hill that I've never climbed up on before. Because they didn't really leave very much evidence of their existence, you know, in terms of there's no structures. There's a lot of it. No idea. Not when this was here. They say that dark red sun is ancient and fading into black. The cooling embers will turn cold and never will turn back There was an empire on that spirit now nothing grows Volcanic ashes cover ancient ruins and that's how it goes They say the people try to live without Every now and then you'll see something like that. It's just a very late saguaro fruit. So this saguaro has, looks like at least three fruits at the very top. It's probably, now it could be one. Well, it looks like there's four or five of them up there. So in October, that's, you know, I mean, there's, oh, there's one over there that's still got some, uh, some flowers on it, so. And there's some, Going at the very top, which would be awfully hard to get. But those, once they turn into fruits, would be possible. So, some of the cactus fruits this time of the year just don't taste good. Um, and that's not always 100% of the case, so. But it's food. I mean, you're not going to starve, right? So, I think important key to a gatherer's lifestyle if you wanted to eat the foods you find growing on the land is you have to take a walk so you're getting exercise and food gathering at the same time that's how you gather you got to go take a hike you know um, you're not likely to be able to stay in one spot and find food all year round everything you need for yourself and your family in that one spot you could live in one spot but I think migrating, moving around, if you were to live out in the wilderness and be a gatherer, uh, migrating is, is absolutely essential to living that way. You have to hike. So let's say you lived in an area, if you were a gathering culture, maybe your family lived out in the wilderness, you live in this one spot and you, uh, you know, gather your food by hiking in a radius as far as what makes sense until you've gathered you know what you can gather and if the season isn't over and you've taken everything from there hypothetically then you have to move you know, um, if you're in a place where there's a lot of bounty you could stay in the same area year-round but I mean this this 
place here has a lot of specific types of bounty. <laughs> you know, like I said, like you could you could spend a lot of time here in this very spot and just live off of things like uh, ironwood beans. Now, if you want to, maybe. Um, there's a lake not far from here. You can fish too. A lot of flat spots on the sides of the mountains here that would be very cool camping spots with a with a good view, you know. Um, be a nice place to have a little a tent or a little shelter if if you do it without snoopy people. You know, snoopy people getting in your business and calling the police or something, you know, because they don't think anybody should be living you know, different than the way they do, or whatever. One thing about this part of Arizona is that this time of year, this is what you expect an Akatia to look like. But sometimes, and it's just like what I was saying about the saguaro fruit, sometimes it just, things don't grow in the season you'd expect them to because it's kind of like summer all year here. It's just, I mean, a, an actual Arizona summer is a wicked summer. Uh, the winter here is kind of like a summer in the Northwest or something. So that's just the way it is. It's kind of like everything is, I don't know, Indian summer. So because of not only the season, but a general lack of rain, these are very spongy and dried up inside so you can squish them, which in the spring when they're fat, you know, new and whatever, they're solid. And, uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if you could soak them overnight or for a couple days or something just to get the water inside them. If they might not be a lot better as food at this time of the year, it probably can be done. It wouldn't surprise me if it's something that used to be done. Still can't make up my mind if this is really just a natural formation. There's a lot of these things coming down the mountains that look like old rock walls. Like a long straight rock wall, but I think it's a natural formation. I think to say. I'm assuming it is. See, there's another one going up that way. There were proud and lazy people and thinking life was good. There were other people struggling just to do the best that they could. But most of them were too busy to stop and look around. Ashes Ashes, we all will fall down. How is the land of spirits relevant? They say. Like the fallen angels who in each 